Tekken. What an excellent series of fighting games. With the eighth mainline entry in the series arriving in 2024, Tekken Mania is once again at a fever pitch. But if we really want to go back to when this franchise became one of the hottest properties around, we need to look to the past, to the classic game that is Tekken 2. This was a fighting game that it felt like every gamer in the world owned at the time, with it functioning as a core part of many earliest PlayStation owners' collections. Which raises the question, what was it about this fighting game that made it so irresistible to the average gamer? leading to it being one of the most popular games on the entire Sony PlayStation platform as a whole. Let's find out. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is the insane history of Tekken 2, a game that on release was the biggest fighting game since the legendary Street Fighter 2. Yeah! The early 90s was certainly the rise of the versus fighting game genre, with Street Fighter 2 making an incredible mark on both the arcade and the console market alike. The likes of Mortal Kombat would make a huge impact in its own right, and the polygonal graphics of Sega's Virtua Fighter would introduce new dimensions to this play style quite literally. This arcade and Sega Saturn game would soon be answered with the creation of Namco's Tekken that would feature in the arcades but also see release on the Sony PlayStation. Interestingly, a lot of the key game design would be handled by Seichi Ishii, the same person who had previously worked on game design for Virtua Fighter. Arguably, Tekken was the more attractive game of the pair, as its polygonal fighters were actually textured, giving it greater graphical appeal. Combine this with a cool roster and Tekken's inventive, easily digestible gameplay that saw fighters' limbs mapped to the PlayStation controller buttons, this led to Tekken instantly receiving a large amount of casual appeal. However, it would be the next entry in the series that would set the gaming world on fire. First arriving in arcades just eight months after its predecessor, Tekken 2, which was once again designed by Seichi Ishii, delivered everything that a sequel should. This arcade hit and the Sony PlayStation home version that followed it both delivered huge critical and commercial success stories, earning the admiration of fans around the globe forever. But what was it about this one that not only made it special to play, but just as importantly, a game that everyone who owned the Sony PlayStation felt the compulsion to buy? You see, Tekken 2 would build upon the foundation laid by its predecessor, the original Tekken. However, it would also introduce several nuanced enhancements to its gameplay, while still managing to maintain the core elements that defined the series and was turning people's heads in the first place. First off, the game preserves the utilisation of 2D backgrounds in its stages, showing up once more as expansive playing fields that serve as a battleground for legendary adrenaline fueled matches to take place, that take advantage of Tekken's ingenious fighting system that's driven by the four distinct buttons, each assigned to a left punch, right punch, left kick and right kick. You know, the simple yet immersive action style that had been established previously, but not everyone had been introduced to as of yet. Noteworthy but awesome additions to the gameplay included the incorporation of attack reversals for select characters as well as the introduction of back throws, intricate chain throws and a distinctive sidestep manoeuvre exclusive to two characters, Kazuya Mishima and Hihachi Mishima. These two also play a huge role in Tekken 2's unfolding narrative, an element we shall of course touch on very shortly. Speaking of new mechanics, Yoshimitsu, who was also introduced in the previous game, possesses a spinning sidestep move, a beat at the cost of his own health. Furthermore, tackles underwent modifications to now inflict damage when executed from a more considerable distance. On the subject of Tekken 2's gameplay, Tekken 2 introduced juggling, allowing players to launch opponents into the air and continue attacking them while airborne. For more competitively minded players, mastering combos and juggling is crucial for maximising damage and gaining an edge in battles. Each character also has a set of special moves and unique attacks that can be executed through specific combinations of button inputs and joystick movements. Learning these moves is essential for effective gameplay. Players can block incoming attacks by holding back on the joystick. Additionally, there are counters and reversals that players can use to turn the tide of a battle when timed correctly. Each character has a health gauge that depletes as they take damage. The first player to deplete their opponent's health wins the round, and the first to win two rounds wins the match. But all of this, of course, is just the fight in itself in the game, with arguably the other elements of the title that was brought into play further contributing to the so many reasons that people fell in love with this one. 
let's talk about one of the most memorable elements of this game, its characters, and perhaps more impressively, how they are utilised in helping this one become so addictive, whether you are massively into competitive fighters or not. Within the expansive realm of this game, a diverse array of combatants graces the stage, totaling an impressive ensemble of 25 fighters. Among them, 17 familiar faces, seasoned veterans return to the fray, who are joined by the introduction of 8 newcomers, injecting fresh blood into an already formidable roster. Not just that, but the characters who had debuted prior would also receive huge glow-ups in terms of both aesthetics and play. In fact, the developers would meticulously transform fighters who once simply mirrored each other in the inaugural edition, elevating them into distinct and fully playable entities. While these revamped characters maintained certain shared manoeuvres with their prior selves, they now boasted unique identities adding layers of depth to this classic. One particularly noteworthy improvement to this lineup is Devil Kazuya. Originating as a mere bonus palette swap of Kazuya in the initial game's home console version, Devil Kazuya this time around has ascended to the status of a complete and fully playable character who is mechanically distinct from regular Kazuya. Not just that, but just look how freaking cool its newer design was in comparison to his first incarnation. This ultimate adversary serves as the pinnacle challenge in this iteration as the game's final boss, with the inclusion of this imposing fighter not only expanding the playable character roster, but also elevating the narrative stakes, which we shall touch more on soon. Apart from the Tekken 2 roster being awesome, what is just as cool about this game is how we obtain the ability to play as a lot of them. Within the roster of 25 playable fighters, a mere 10 are readily accessible by default, leaving the remaining contenders shrouded in mystery to be unearthed throughout the arcade version's intriguing time release system. Perhaps more memorably, and how a lot of us were introduced to a lot of these fighters, would be through the home console version, with the path to unlocking these enigmatic entities, demanding players to triumph in arcade mode of each base character to be able to unravel the full spectrum of the cast. It is perhaps this cool design decision that would feed into Tekken 2 players returning to the title over and over again in the 90s, experiencing and finishing the game with each to be able to see which interesting character they will be able to unlock next. But if you own the home version of this game, unlocking new fighters was not the only bonus we would receive as a reward for repeat plays, as finishing the game with each character would also allow us to witness unique cinematic endings. These showcased the fate of each fighter we opted to play as. In a world that mainly still featured slow dial-up internet, unlocking and watching each of these endings was like crack for 90s kids, and if you were like myself and playing Tekken 2 and not doing crack, then it's likely that these endings would give you a relatively good dopamine high that would keep all of us coming back for more over and over again. I guess this is now like one of those memes, which states only 90s games will understand this. But if you were there at the time, you know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to this. Speaking of the game's irresistible fighters and their amazing endings, the game features a loose narrative that like many elements of the game, once again built on its predecessor. Set two years after the tumultuous events of the first King of Iron Fist tournament, the Mishima Zai Batsu, under the control of the Iron Fisted leadership of Kazuya Mishima, has burgeoned into a nexus of corruption and unprecedented power, far surpassing the ruthlessness exhibited by his father, Aihachi Mishima. Kazuya, unencumbered by his moral qualms, engages in a reprehensible hiring spree of assassins, dispatching them ruthlessly to silence any detractors or rivals daring to question his authority. This calculated campaign extends further as he brazenly attempts to extort exorbitant sums from numerous businesses and organisations, leaving a trail of economic havoc in his wake. The genesis of this malevolent metamorphosis lies in the unchecked proliferation of the devil gene within Kazuya. Consumed by an unrelenting hatred towards his father, Ihachi Kazuya succumbs to the demonic forces within him, unleashing a torrent of evil deeds that reverberate throughout the Mishima Zaibatsu and beyond. It's not long before Kazuya finds himself ensnared in the web of consequences of these controversial actions that have even seen him performing cruel experiments on animals. These actions catch the attention of Jun Kazama, a determined animal rights activist and skilled operative who takes it upon herself to apprehend Kazuya and bring him to justice. 
Meanwhile, the terrifying Haihachi, who had suffered defeat and a perilous fall from a cliff at the hands of Kazuya in the previous game, resurfaces with a vengeance. He embarks on a rigorous training regimen, harboring an agenda to overthrow Kazuya and reclaim control of his family business. In a bold move to eliminate his adversaries and solidify his grip on power, Kazuya orchestrates the grand spectacle known as the King of Iron Fist Tournament 2, the very tournament in which we see all the fights in the game take place. This competition carries with it the allure of a staggering cash prize, a draw dropping $1 trillion, strategically designed to draw out Haihachi, who cannot resist the temptation of revenge. As the narrative unfolds throughout the playthroughs, Jun Kazama enters the fray with her mission to apprehend Kazuya, taking an unexpected turn when she faces him in combat. A mysterious force beyond Jun's control seems to bind them together, creating a magnetic connection that transcends their adversarial roles. Despite her duty to bring Kazuya to justice for his illicit activities, including the smuggling of protected animals, Jun grapples with an inner conflict. She harbors the desire to free Kazuya from the clutches of his malevolent power. With the tournament unfolding, with Haihachi systematically defeating his opponents, including his adopted son Lee, who had aligned himself with Kazuya and served as a secretary within the family business, Haihachi is on a roll. However, his victorious streak comes to an abrupt halt in the semi-finals, where he faces off against none other than Kazuya's old rival, Paul Phoenix. In a stunning turn of events, Paul emerges triumphant, earning the right to a coveted rematch with Kazuya, setting the stage for a climactic showdown that promises to reshape the destiny of the Mishima family. While this is the case, there is yet another twist. The tournament officials take the decision to reinstate Haihachi, granting him the opportunity to step into the finals as a replacement for Paul, who was compelled to forfeit due to being ensnared in a traffic accident involving a multi-car collision on the expressway. The resultant delay prevented Paul from reaching the match on time. During this interval, June managed to instigate an internal turmoil within Kazuya, eroding the grip of the devil over him. Despite her earnest endeavours, June could not forestall Kazuya from advancing to confront his father, Haihachi, in the tournament finals. In this climactic showdown, Haihachi and Kazuya clashed once more. This battle for the ages is when the Devil Gene resurged within Kazuya's being, transforming him into the formidable Devil Enfos we now all know so well. Paradoxically, despite this horrifying manifestation, Kazuya in the story finds himself unable to overpower Haihachi, owing this to the ongoing internal conflict within him. This inner struggle was characterised by the dichotomy between his malevolent side, embodied by the Devil, and his benevolent side, represented by an enigmatic entity known as Angel. The emergence of Angel occurred subsequent to Kazuya's previous encounter with June. Emerging victorious in the finals, Aihachi seized the opportunity to exact revenge on Kazuya. He carried Kazuya's unconscious form to the edge of a volcano and cast him into its fiery depths. Subsequently, Aihachi made a daring escape on a helicopter just as the volcano erupted in the backdrop. With this act, Aihachi not only avenged past grievances, but also reclaimed control of the Mishima Saibatsu. Meanwhile, during the course of the tournament, June, who had become pregnant following her encounter with Kazuya, gave birth to their illegitimate son, Jin Kazama, setting up the events for the arguably even more epic Tekken 3 in the future. Interestingly, as great as this amazing narrative is, it may very well have flown over many gamers' heads, particularly considering that each character has a different ending, with most not relating to this incident despite Devil Kazuya usually being the final boss but this didn't mean there weren't even more reasons to love Tekken 2. The character designs and their movesets were fantastic, even if you just used your imagination to infer information about each of their backstories. There is no surprise when we consider that each one was created with incredible attention to detail, comprising of around 800 polygons each. It is said that the arduous process of bringing these fighters to life involved a substantial investment of time, ranging from three days to a week for the modeling phase alone. One fascinating origin tale within this creative endeavour is the birth of Roger the Kangaroo, an endearing character that emerged as a passion project by a dedicated member of the development team. Driven by an innate desire to explore his creative prowess, this team member dedicated his precious free time to conceive and mould the charismatic kickboxer. Others working on the game found the charm and uniqueness of Roger's design so compelling that when the creator showcased the kangaroo to them, an overwhelming consensus emerged that Roger needed to be integrated into the game. The journey to adapt Tekken 2 from an arcade game to a PlayStation 1 was not without its challenges. 
A considerable portion of the development process for the console version was allocated to the insane task of rewriting the code to seamlessly align with the limited memory capacity of the PlayStation. This posed a significant challenge considering the console's memory space was approximately half the size of the game's data employed in the original arcade version. The team's commitment to delivering a stellar gaming experience on the PlayStation platform led them to invest considerable time and effort into optimising the code, ensuring that the essence and dynamism of Tekken 2 would be faithfully preserved in this console adaptation. What's even more impressive is that the transition of Tekken 2 to the PlayStation marked not only a technological advancement, but also an enhancement of the overall gaming experience. This adaptation boasts a plethora of new features, elevating the gameplay and adding a layer of depth that extends beyond the confines of the arcade original. One notable addition is the inclusion of distinctive CGI endings tailored for each character we mentioned earlier, serving as a testament to attention to detail. Expanding beyond the traditional arcade mode, Tekken 2 for the PlayStation also introduced a variety of engaging modes that cater to different player preferences. From the adrenaline pumping survival mode, where players strive to endure an onslaught of opponents, to the race against time in time attack mode. Every mode offered a distinct challenge, ensuring hours of diverse and captivating gameplay. Building on this, team battle mode took the competition to new heights by allowing players to assemble their dream teams and engage in strategic battles and practice mode provided a dedicated space for players to hone their skills and perfect their techniques. While all of this might sound a bit underwhelming by modern standards, this much content in a fighting game was practically unheard of at the time. There is no doubt that Tekken 2 was both a visual delight and an addictive playable delight alike, but further to this, it was also an auditory delight. In fact, many tracks from this game remain earworms in my consciousness, well over a quarter of a century removed from my first playthrough. The game features carefully arranged music and exquisite collaborative effort led by a talented team of composers. This team includes the original composer, Yoshi Arakawa, alongside a host of other talented people. Their collective expertise and creativity shine through in the reimagined musical compositions, which add a fresh and dynamic dimension to the game. The music in this one massively enhances the immersive quality, enriching the overall sensory experience for players that engage in the intense battles and explore this epic fighter of our past. The game was both a commercial and critical success alike. In the pages of Game Machine's September 1995 issue in Japan, Tekken 2 was heralded as the preeminent arcade game, marking a remarkable triumph for the gaming industry. In the Japanese market alone, an impressive 15,000 arcade units of Tekken 2 were swiftly snatched up, solidifying its status as the highest grossing arcade video game of 1996. As we know though, the success of Tekken 2 went far beyond the borders of Japan, capturing the hearts and coins of arcade goers worldwide. A staggering 40,000 units were sold globally by the close of December 1996. This crazy feat not only underscored Tekken 2's universal appeal, but also positioned it as an iconic landmark in arcade history. The resonance of Tekken 2 extended across the Pacific to the United States, where its popularity soared to even more crazy heights. According to Replay, a prominent industry source, Tekken 2 proudly claimed the title of the second most popular arcade game during its time. While the arcade glory Tekken 2 experience is a part of this game's legacy, it was the game's impact on the Sony PlayStation that truly helped it earn its place in time, propelling it to unprecedented heights of global success. The PlayStation port of Tekken 2 emerged as a juggernaut, weaving its greatness into the fabric of gaming forever. In Japan, the PlayStation version of Tekken 2 edged its name in the record books, boasting an impressive feat of selling over 1 million units by the brisk month of October 96. As the year drew to a close, the game's triumphs continued unabated, surpassing 1.2 million units sold and securing its place as the crowning jewel of video game sales in Japan that year. Crossing the Pacific to North America, Tekken 2 for the PlayStation demonstrated its prowess by achieving nearly 1 million copies sold within just a mere 4 months. But the European continent too succumbed to the irresistible allure of Tekken. By December 96, a staggering 420,000 copies have found their ways into the hands of eager gamers, earning the title of the second best-selling PlayStation game in Europe for that year. But it was right here in the United Kingdom where Tekken 2 truly was king, perhaps further influencing my impression with regards to how beloved this one was.
On these small islands alone, it not only claimed the bestseller status, but also amassed a staggering £15 million, or $23 million in revenue by December 96. This financial triumph contributed significantly to the budgeting success of the PlayStation, as the UK's install base swelled to 750,000 units. If you thought Jungle was massive, it was nothing compared to Tekken 2. Wicked Wicked. The game in question garnered widespread acclaim from discerning game critics, attaining a commendable 93% rating on game rankings for its PlayStation iteration. Critics were particularly effusive in their praise for the game's innovative employment of light sourcing, a technical feat that added a layer of visual sophistication to the gaming experience. The fluidity of character movement was another lauded aspect, with reviewers extolling the seamless and responsive controls that enhanced the overall gameplay dynamics. Remarkably, many felt the game managed to strike a perfect balance between catering to seasoned players and welcoming inexperienced gamers into the fold, earning praise for its accessibility and inclusive design. Facets that would help Tekken 2 become one of the most popular fighting games the world had ever seen, leading people to buy in this one who had never purchased a fighting game before. Electronic Gaming Monthly went so far as to declare Tekken 2 as the best 3D fighting game you could find for any system and GamePro, in a forward-looking comparison to other fighting games still in development, confidently assured gamers that it would be at least a year before Tekken 2 could be surpassed, solidifying its status as a benchmark for excellence in the realm of fighting games, which arguably would happen with the release of Tekken 3, which very well might be the story we cover on here next week. So subscribe now and comment below if you want to see me release a video on that one. Now check out my video on this wild Dreamcast game. Yeah, cheerio. Oh.